What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. It's me, Mikey Pipes. We're at our next service call in the Bronx. <sighs> Took a hot minute to get here. My customer booked this service call on my website, pipedoc.net. Click the little button to book online, and it gives you the option for a Bronx trip charge. Anyway, he's got a Dunkirk gas boiler. And he's got a Honeywell 9000 thermostat that he's trying to install and several other plumbers he kicked out of the house because they didn't know what they were doing. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. You got a gas boiler or furnace, chances are you got a 24 volt thermostat, you got the C wire. All you need is to have that extra wire going to the thermostat, you're good. So if you need a help, give me a call. 516-348-6300. Let's get on with today's job. Here's that Dunkirk boiler. There she is. This is a 105,000 BTU boiler, a little baby boiler, but appropriately sized for the home. That little green thing that's installed in the wrong orientation, that's called a circulator. It circulates the water to the heating zone, which is a supply right here and a return. This right here is called an Aquastat relay. It gets a signal from the thermostat and it regulates the boiler temperature and sends power to the circulator. Um, that right there, missing the drip leg, is our 30 PSI relief valve. It is company policy to verify that the relief valves, the relief safety valves on the equipment that you're working on is proper. There is an Extrol Amtrol number 30 expansion tank that absorbs pressure in a closed system. As water is heated, uh, it expands. With that expansion tank, that drip leg would drip. This right here is a pressure reducing valve. It reduces pressure up from the house, domestic pressure, which is 50 to 70 PSI, sometimes higher, sometimes a little bit less, down to 12 to 15. This is our flue pipes. Looks like it's five inch. This is where our vent damper would normally be. That's our temperature and pressure gauge. Right now it's cold, it's off. Our gas valve also getting power from the safety circuit the gas is off I turned everything off but what's really really interesting here take a closer look here i'm going to lay down the floor is that little thing right there that little thing right there installed in that weird fashion right that is called a thermal couple its job is to sit in the pilot flame by the pilot the pilot burner assembly and Send a small electrical charge to the gas valve, keeping the pilot open, proving that. Let's see if I can get a better view on how these knuckleheads installed that. Yep, there it is. There's that view, ladies and gentlemen. It's a priceless view right there. That's worth its weight in gold. Uh, look at that. There's our thermal couple, just wedged in there between the two cast iron burners, just resting in the pilot flame. And that is hackery at its finest. And since this homeowner paid handsomely for me to come to the Bronx, as I say, hacks bring me stacks. So my mission, which I chose to accept, is to install, oh, you know, oh, this is a forward-facing video right now, don't worry. I won't get you a video unless you want to be like a star. I can make you a YouTube star. My mission, which I chose to accept, is to install this Honeywell 9000 smart color thermostat, which I love. I love these. Absolutely love this. We are going to install this. Now the homeowner, well, let's just say he couldn't find this wire. Quiet. Right? Which goes to the thermostat here in the boiler room. Because it wasn't in the boiler room, it was in the ceiling of the boiler room above it. Alright, so here's that wire, which goes in there. You can see we're using this junction box for line and low voltage wiring. We're gonna take this wire and get it out of here, right? Which goes into this BX armored cable or MC cable, yeah, BX. And we're gonna run it to this 
Aquastat relay, which I just loosened up the set screw, the 516 set screw. I'm going to pull that out. So here is that Aquastat relay, that temperature capillary probe. The capillary tubing in the probe is inserted into the well, which is right there. And that senses temperature. And this is a high limit Aquastat. And it can also connect to a vent damper. See, it's jumped out. But it gets 110 volts incoming on L1 and L2, top left of the screen. When there's a call for heat, the thermostat relay closes. And as long as the rollout switch and the spill switch, rollout switch, spill switch are okay, and the other safety circuits are okay, it will send 24 volts to the gas valve. And as long as the pilot is on, the gas valve will open. So we need to make another connection here. We have R, which is 24 volts. We have W, which is the heating circuit. And all we need is C, common, which is like the neutral, right? And it's available right there. You see? Right there. All right, this wire right here, it's going to our thermostat. I took the black, the white, and the red, and I took some five wire, and I used the blue wire nuts because I don't have any more Wagos left, and connected R, H, W, and C. And we're going to run this to the Aquastat relay right there. All right, there is my thermostat wire. My R went on to TV. The W, you see there's a, a, a bar there, our stunt, that is our common, and the T is our W. So we're going to reconnect the Aquastat relay back to the well, secure that down, then go to the thermostat. All right, the base plate for the Honeywell thermostat is in the plaster wall. We kept the jumper between R and RC. We're using a single transformer system. My red or RH is going to R. The black wire, which I made common, is going to C. And the white wire is going to W. All right, let's see what happens. Bingo. That's right, baby. What do you think? Good. So far, so good? So far, so good. <laughs> uh, English or Espanol? English. I'll call this, I'll call this heat. This is the one problem that I have with the Honeywell, the responsiveness to touch. Location is heat. It does heating only. We have a hot water or steam system. It's hot water. We have a single stage because only W is connected, not W and W2, saving the changes. Uh, do you want to connect to Wi-Fi now? Yes. Absolutely. Searching for wireless networks. All right, so we took out that burner and I put the thermal couple back into the pilot burner assembly. And I guess when they took the old thermal couple out, you know, they broke the threads inside the part that threads on that inside there. So I have it wedged in there, it's not going anywhere. At least it's in, the, it's in the right spot now and not wedged between the two cast iron burners. Um, looking at my heat exchanger a little bit. Yeah, you got a little bit of white powder growing there. You know, not that kind of powder, ladies and gentlemen. Get that shit out of your, <laughs> get that mentality out of your head. Come on, this is a plumbing and heating channel. This is not, uh, we're not skiing here. All right, but uh, heat exchange looks pretty decent. It's all good there. So let's put the other burner back in, fire up. All right, let's turn this bad boy to on. Houston, we have ignition. All right, it's combustion analysis time. I take the probe out because we had sky high amounts of carbon dioxide. Uh, it is what it is. Trying to let that uh, calm back down again. And we'll take some adjustments. Make some adjustments, hopefully. All right. Made some adjustments to the gas valve, and now we're at zero parts per million. 5.2% O2. Gross efficiency of 83 and a half almost, and 370 stack temperature. Not too shabby. 
All right, using a field piece digital manometer, I'm checking the outlet pressure of our gas. And you can see we're at 3.49. God knows what it was before, and I guess maybe I should have checked before dialing it down, but I knew I had a serious adjustment to make when I was over 4,000 parts per million of carbon oxide. So a little simple adjustment with the right tool. All right, testing draft now. Yeah, not good. Let's open that back door and see if this thing changes. I doubt you have a chimney liner in there and looking at the three inch flue for the water heater. Yeah, I'm not really, oh yeah, it's coming down a little bit. You know, I got my hand here and if it was a real, um, like a spill switch type of issue with positive draft coming down the chimney, I'd be concerned with that, but um, we're okay here, but introducing more fresh air into the home by opening up the back door uh, brought that positive down draft and negative in positive inches of water column down from point oh was it sixteen thousandths yeah tens hundreds thousands yeah brought that down a little bit but we need to get a chimney company here and double check that uh the chimney condition say point oh oh eight all right but he's got a chimney company out here. And now that we adjusted the gas pressure, we got a new sticker in front of the one that was burning up. We're gonna keep an eye on that because it's cool. It should be cool to the touch. Just just lets air in and helps with pot natural draft going up the chimney. Do a valve tag on for the incoming gas for the boiler on the water heater, water heater feed valve, and then boiler feed valve. Very, very nice. So you'll keep an eye on this because the other one was, you know, kind of like Stained, burning up or getting hot. So if that one, you see one start to, start to bubble up. That's a sign of what? It's a sign of uh, time for it to go, basically. Uh, no, but, you know, may, maybe um, the next time, you know, uh, maybe next season, um, keep an eye on this. You know, like the other one, it was starting to discolor because it, was, it looked like it was, you know, getting too much heat there. Um, well, I did adjust the gas valve when we first did a combustion analysis after I let the boiler run for about five, seven, ten minutes. We had sky high amounts of carbon monoxide, you know, into the 4,000 range. Uh, anything under 50 is acceptable. I try to get as low, to, as close to zero as possible. We ended up getting around five. So we were over 4,000 before I took it out to down to five. And all I did was adjust the incoming, I'm sorry, the gas pressure leaving the gas valve to the burners. It's called a manifold pressure. All I did was adjust that. I didn't take a number before I adjusted it because I saw the sky high amounts of carbon. I knew I was adjusting it anyway. Um, God knows what that amount was. And, you know, you're wasting more gas than what's necessary to give the same result. So let's say, you you know, you need a 3.5. Let's say we're, you need to drive 35 miles an hour, but you're driving 70. You're going to get there faster, right? But you're also putting excessive wear and tear on, on the car. So here, let's say it was at seven inches, right? And I loaded down to 3.5 blindly until I hooked up the, 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 my digital manometer to test the gas pressure. I was just looking at the numbers of carbon monoxide because I want to. I know that if I have improper combustion, I'm going to have carbon monoxide as a byproduct of improper combustion. The close to complete combustion we have, or 100% efficiency of the flame, will have zero carbon monoxide. And there are some people that say that, hey, you know what? Uh, you always have carbon monoxide, which is bullshit. You know, you'll, you, if, if you have perfect combustion, you'll have no carbon monoxide. And here, I got it down to zero, right? But then, you know, I, to, I raised it up. It was like 3.1 inches. Then I went brought the 3.5. And yeah, you are five of par particles from million carbon monoxide. At the end of the day, what good is a functional boiler if it's not burning safely? And that's why we have the tools, like that combustion analyzer by Testo, to test. Mm -hmm. You get what you pay for. 100%. All right. Good stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, a little before 10 o'clock in the morning, finished up that service call in the Bronx. Um, moral of the story here is, just because there's nothing there clearly marked a C terminal, doesn't mean it's not there. You got a gas-fired boiler or furnace, uh, chances are you got a transformer there. And if you got a 24 volt transformer, you're gonna have a C terminal. And that terminal was on that Aquastat relay, made it work, 
and accomplished what several other contractors couldn't successfully. Followed up with the completion of the service call, making sure that the system is running properly and safely. What good is having Wi-Fi control if the boiler's putting out thousands and thousands of parts per million of carbon monoxide, which could potentially kill people, the occupants of the home? If you ain't testing, you're guessing. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about doing this, you can email me, mike at mikeypipes.com. If you would like to set up a virtual consultation, you can go to pipedoc.net, book an appointment online, and we can set up a Zoom conference call. A half hour is 115 bucks. Uh, also, if you're in the metropolitan uh, New York City, Long Island area, you want to book an exclusive one-on-one -on -one appointment for an urgent issue, you can also book that on my website at pipedoc.net. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you're in the Central Florida area, check out my page, my channel dedicated to the new business that we're expanding in Orlando. Uh, check it out, Mikey Pipes Orlando on the YouTube. Thank you so much. Catch you in the next one. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.